An incredible story from the world of organized crime. It's about a man who pledged himself to the mafia at age 22 after his father, a notorious New York City crime boss, was sentenced to 50 years in prison. The son rose quickly through the ranks, devising a scheme that brought the family hundreds of millions of dollars. But then came a woman and a moment that made him walk away. Most wise guys quit the mob in one of two ways, witness relocation or a body bag. But Michael Franzese has somehow managed to avoid both, and he still gets away with showing his face on the same streets he ruled as captain of the Colombo crime family. Some of the Bonanos were around here too in this section, but you know, this was our town, this was, this was us, so we had it wrapped up. This mobster-turned-minister has come back to Brooklyn on a mission from God to pay a jailhouse visit to his mafia boss' father in an effort to save his soul from hell. And that would be no small feat, because Sonny Franzis is a living legend of the Cosa Nostra. FBI wiretaps have captured this underboss of the Columbos bragging about the dozens of men he's killed and describing his favorite way to dispose of bodies using knives, a kiddie pool, and a trash compactor. Terrible. I mean, he wasn't indicted for that, but terrible. So when you sit down with your dad and you look at him, and he, can, can you imagine him doing these things, these heinous things? The yes. father you love? You can imagine it. I, I can, yeah. You know why I can, Bill? Because I was part of that life, and I understand. Um, I, am I ashamed of it? Yeah. So how were you instructed in... The difference between right and wrong. What was your moral code in your house growing up? Believe it or not, my dad told me it's wrong to lie, it's wrong to cheat, it's wrong to steal. But uh, he put something in my head which was the wrong thing to do at that age. But he said, you know, I don't ever want you to be in law enforcement because police take an oath to lock up their own parents. And how could you ever do anything like that? In 1970, Sonny Franzese got a 50-year sentence for masterminding a string of bank robberies a crime Michael insists he didn't commit. It was then, on another prison visit, that Michael offered to take up the family business. For about a year, I was in a pledge period where I had to do anything and everything I was told to do to prove myself to them. And then a year later, 1975, I was uh, called into room, and that's the night I got made. What did you have to do in that first year? Do you have to kill somebody? You know, Bill, it's, uh, you're expected to do that. If you're called upon to do it, you're expected to do it. They were bringing so many guys in, there probably wasn't enough guys to, to kill. So they just, a lot of guys came into the There weren't family. enough hits to go around. There weren't enough hits to go around. After a few years loan sharking and bookmaking, Michael concocted a scheme to skim tax money from billions of gallons of wholesale gasoline. How much you make? At one point in time, we're bringing in eight, nine million dollars a week into our operation. And uh, Bill, for seven years, I never lost an argument. And you had Nicky Eyes. What's up, guy? And Mikey Franchese. Yeah, it's no coincidence there is a character named after him in the movie Goodfellas. Because by the early 80s, he and his crew had established a mythical reputation among New York's five families. I'm not going to lie to you. When I was in that life, you know, people ask me all the time, Mike, what do you miss? You know, the money, the power. Just look, I had a jet plane, I had a helicopter, a lot of things at my disposal. But... I miss the camaraderie I had with the guys back then. I mean, you know, we were a tight-knit group. And uh, to me, there's nothing more powerful than a brotherhood among guys, you know? At what point did it stop being enjoyable? Well, you know, along with that, because I became so high profile, you know, I was constantly under investigation. Two things changed his life, prison and a woman named Camille. As the feds closed in, he fell in love with this devout Christian, accepted her faith, and a plea deal. As he served a five-year sentence, he sent word to his dad he was leaving the mob, and the Columbos were furious. His father approved a contract on his head, but he didn't reach bottom until a parole violation sent him back inside. Point When they locked me up that night, it was the worst night of my life. And that's the night that I really, first time, cried out to God and said, if you're really up there, you need to help me because I can't deal with this. He spent 29 months in the hole, reading his Bible all the while. Wave to mom, wave. And after his release, wave. he moved to California, grew his family, and at the urging of the FBI, began the lecturing Lord, athletes on the dangers of gambling. God forgives us our sins, and tomorrow's a new day. 
four books and thousands of sermons later, he packs megachurches with his tale of redemption. There's no blueprint for leaving the mob the way I did and publicly survived the way I have. So I, I attribute that to uh, God having a different purpose for me. And that contract on his head, it was never fulfilled because he never testified against anyone in his former life. I don't believe that it's my job to help the government and go around and put people in jail. I don't believe that. I don't think scripture uh, demands that. But that seems like the right thing to do, whether it's the scripture says it or not. You know what, Bill? I honestly don't feel that way. But ironically, his own brother does not adhere to this code of silence, and that is why their father will likely die in prison. I would have grabbed Conway and Susan and Aaron and told him, look, you mother Right. I would have told him, go out there and get the money and bring it in. After the FBI paid him $50,000, John Frenzy secretly recorded their 93-year-old father. No 25, 5,000. And if you don't give it, he leave him on the floor. It was decisive evidence as Sonny was convicted of shaking down two Manhattan strip clubs. My dad's brokenhearted. He even told a half an hour ago when I was with him. He said, Mike, I just can't believe it. He's so hurt over what happened. He just, that's the part that he can't live with. If, you're, if your younger brother is found in a dumpster somewhere tomorrow, you suspect your father for pulling, no. pulling the trigger? I don't suspect that, and uh, it'll never happen because my brother's not important enough. Were you able to uh, broach the topic that you had hoped to in terms uh, of his uh, soul and, and how he'll spend eternity? Actually, we were. I, I got to go easy with him, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, I really, you know, Bill, I've seen something in him recently that I've never witnessed in my dad in all the years I know him, and that is humility. And I think that's a big first step in, in accepting our faith and accepting the Lord. And my dad did 30 years for a crime that he did not commit. But you gotta admit, he got away with an awful lot of crimes that uh, he never got tried for. So but karma kind of evened out. A hundred percent, and I agree with that. Now, is it justified? In the moral respect, maybe, but I'm not God. I don't play God. So this is where I live now. It's kind of uh, a million miles away from Brooklyn. When's the last time you were approached by somebody, either in the FBI or from the family, trying to pull you back in? A guy called me up, used to be around me, used to be in my crew, and I hadn't seen him for over 20 years. And he, uh, it was funny because he said to me, hey, Chief, you need to come back. There's nobody out here. Nobody's making money anymore. They'll welcome you with open arms. It wasn't tempting in the least? Not in the least. Not even a little twinge? Your not life? E not even a... Uh, I'd have to be out of my... I'd need a lobotomy if I ever thought of something like that again. I believe with all my heart, 1,000%, that God had a different plan and purpose. I don't know where it's going to end. Yeah, I could walk out the door tomorrow and, uh, and somebody shoot me in the head, especially in Brooklyn. Who knows? But, uh, and if, if it happens, so be it. Then I fulfilled my purpose and I, I go to heaven. That's where I believe I'm going anyway, I hope so.